back over to you, Bill. Okay, so let's get started. So um, this month, we are doing the vendor showcase. Uh, we're gonna feature Microsoft Azure, and this is a research presentation. And I love the title, Stay Fit, Stay Safe. And it's about a deep learning solution that uses AI to look at video content to help you better understand and engage with yoga. Um, and so our key presenter today, uh, both of them, first one is Dr. Alexandra Savaliva, and she's an applied research lead at Azure Data and she's an alumna of UC Berkeley in the MIDS program. So as a part of her data scientist and engineer role at Microsoft, she's working on a ton of interesting problems around networking and IoT and optimizing configurations and looking at hardware performance and capacity planning and process mining. We're very lucky because she's also an incoming instructor for the iSchool uh, for the deep science and deep learning uh, cloud and at the edge. And yeah, sorry for the acronym there, uh, Amy. This is the link to the iSchool program that she's uh, teaching. And then also she'll be joined by Linda Yang, who's a software engineer at Nordstrom in supply chain technology. And she also is a Berkeley Masters of Data Science and leads a team to develop inbound uh, transportation optimization platform for Nordstrom, which would be a whole interesting thing to hear about at some point, um, especially with all the supply chain kind of issues we have today. So, uh, and I love that she said in her spare time, she enjoys learning different machine learning models and how to build data pipelines with various cloud infrastructures. So this is gonna be fabulous. And so I will turn it over to you, Alexandra. Thanks for the introduction. And um, let us start presenting. Please let us know uh, Linda, when are you ready to share the screen? Yeah, okay, let me share my screen. Cool. Are you guys able to see the screen? Looks good. Yep. Cool. All right, so welcome to our project, uh, Stay Fit, Stay Safe. Um, we are very excited to present it at this uh, meetup, and um, today you have uh, Linda and I presenting on behalf of our awesome team, uh, Kartik, Simran, Duncan. Um, next slide, please. So the switch to remote work, lesser physical activities and social isolation have created um, substantial challenges. And this was the motivation for uh, our work. And um, we wanted to address the interests of multiple audiences in this talk. Uh, if you came uh, to learn for um, Azure Cloud Technologies specifically about what Microsoft is doing to empower people uh, with building AI solution, then we will have a demo of uh, how we use Azure ML pipeline uh, storage and compute in our project, which we hope will be a very handy experience for you. We will also demonstrate how um, a product uh, called Azure Data Explorer or Gusto, as in the uh, ocean uh, exploration team, can help you explore uh, oceans of data. And we will also demonstrate how Azure Cognitive Services out of box solution are handy to uh, accelerate the development of uh, powerful AI solutions. Now, if you come more of a uh, data science background and are interested in the deep learning aspects of it, we will also have something for you in the sense of uh, demonstrating our work uh, in pose detection in the very challenging domain of uh, yoga poses, uh, multi-model summarization, which is a hot topic these days, and how semantic modeling helps um, implement interesting niche uh, data science solution. Um, if you are into AI for good, we will show how we um, made our effort in making the online content more accessible um, and um, achievable for uh, people uh, with other disabilities. 
and help maintain health during the pandemics. And finally, as we discovered, a lot of people here are yogis. And uh, from the, this perspective, you will find our talk interesting um, and uh, see the solution, which we currently have generally available for people to practice yoga at their homes. Next slide. Uh, so with the increased level of stress worldwide and um, that, that has been substantially imposed by the pandemics and has always been this way, uh, the development of affordable, safe and efficient ways to maintain mental and physical health has become even more important. Yoga is a great way to achieve this, uh, but uh, most fitness centers and yoga studios around the world for the past couple of years have been either fully or partially unavailable, and that uh, reduced the practitioner's ability to get guidance from professional certified instructors. Uh, the impacted population is really huge. Uh, about 36 million people in the United States regularly practice yoga, and uh, for the whole world, this number is about 300 million. So for most of them, pre-recorded uh, live uh, or live video sessions became uh, the alternative to in-person classes during the switch to remote or hybrid uh, environment. However, navigating the ocean of online sessions uh, that fitness centers and instructors have published is pretty challenging, especially for beginners or uh, people with uh, certain hearing or visual disabilities. For example, at the time of this presentation, if you go and search for coming yoga video on YouTube, it will return over eight and a half million results. So how do you know which one is best for you, for your personal health situation and other preferences that you may have in mind for the day? Uh, solving this problem can help us find ways to enable millions of people worldwide to stay physically and mentally fit while staying safe during the unprecedented times of the pandemics and also beyond. So they, that's why we uh, dedicated our uh, Master of Information and Data Science capstone to building AI tools that empower yoga practitioners to navigate the internet for uh, yoga content and create personalized practice experience in the safety of their homes. So over to Linda. Yeah, so as Alexandra mentioned, um, based on the drawback we see from the market, we decided to build an AI framework that would allow the uh, yoga instructor and the practitioner to have a better platform to practice and then develop a personalized exercise uh, experience to them. So without further ado, let's just take a peek for our, um, how our front end looks like. I need to and then go to our website. So this is how our website looks like. So imagine I am a yoga practitioner. I want to see, okay, today I want to do some calming yoga. So I'll just search it. Okay, so I have some lower back issues. So I want to practice my gluteus. And I say, okay, probably I'll try quieting your mind with a twist. Let's see how it does. So once I click into it, what I see is from the top is the YouTube link to the video to our uh, yoga instructor. And down below, what we add is actually we did a summarization for the video so that when user come in, they wouldn't get confused and lost in the meeting of like video online. So this is like summarization, we can say uh, probably 90% of the video is for beginner and then it's a mix of some advanced and medium poses. And here we provide multiple access to people, you know, that have uh, different accessibility to the website. So here we have the text and audio. 
So if we click on this, please join this beginner level 85 minute yoga session with instructor Pavel Dmitriev. Yoga helps improve the state of your body and mind. This practice is especially helpful for the following physical health conditions, digestion, flexibility, energy. Yeah, so this is our text and audio accessibility. And down here, we can also see that we captured the key friends for each yoga process, like when it started. And on the other side, we have the contradiction diction for, uh, so like say, if I'm pregnant, probably I wouldn't wanna practice this poses. And say, if we click one of this, it will take us yes. cat to the pose. This is cat cow pose we're looking at. And probably we can keep, try other cobra. There's up. And this is a cobra. Mostly using the strength of your. So, and then you can see that this is kind of a summary. And then for people who want to deep dive into, we have the health benefit analyzed here for the physical health benefit and then the mental health benefit. You can say coming is one of them. So that's why when we search, this video comes on top. This also have muscle group one. So for people really know which part of the body they want to practice on, um, they can search filter on our muscle group list in our result and it will guide you to the specific video. Um, yeah, so that's the pick for our website. And uh, next I will hand over back to you, Alexandra. Let me see. So I show, okay. Yeah, Linda for great demo. So as you can see, we, in some way we developed a Nordstrom of yoga uh, classes where you can filter and search by your criteria and um, create a personalized experience based on the content that is available online. Currently, there are a few hundreds of uh, instructors' videos uh, provided by participating instructors, uh, but certainly these are not limited. We can easily um, add more and more videos as needed. How is this possible? So the core of our solution is taking raw frames uh, from the video feed and um, outputting inference, integrating it with structured domain knowledge and drawing valuable insights for the end users and instructors that enable uh, summarization and search and discovery of the videos. So to do that, we worked closely with domain experts to create three separate data sets that encompass physical and mental health benefits of performing each poses, as well as structural similarity uh, that is based on physical orientation of the poses. Next slide. Uh, we trained and tested our ML model over 14,000 images uh, which were collected from open source data sets and augmented with frames contrib contributed by project participants as well as some synthetic images. We invested substantial effort in cleaning the data and correcting the labels. We also augmented particularly challenges classes with uh, additional contributions. Our yoga instructors provided access to over a hundred of hours of video lessons. And we also collaborated with them to correctly capture health benefits and contraindications for various yoga poses. Next slide. Uh, we summarize the yoga video sessions by analyzing videos frame by frame. For each frame, we estimate yoga pose through a four-stage process presented in this slide. First, we detect human in each frame uh, of the video using a pre-trained faster RCNN object detector. Uh, the frames with detected human are sent over to a human joint detection model for which we explore the few state-of-the-art uh, models in the open source and settled on deep high resolution model. Uh, 
Uh, we detect 133 unique body joints uh, with the help of this model, and they are fed as coordinates uh, to the next stage. So the next two models are custom um, deep learning models, which were uh, developed by our team for this project. Uh, the extracted joint location is augmented by um, the engineering engineered features, such as relative positions uh, of the joints or distances between the joints. For example, we look at whether left ankle is higher or lower than the right ankle, how far apart are knees, and so on. Finally, we uh, look at uh, this tabular data for uh, classifying it into one of 71 different yoga poses. Uh, we focused on the most common um, beginner to intermediate yoga poses. Uh, and uh, we use a hyperparameter optimized uh, GBM to, uh, to uh, detect uh, the class and uh, the uh, light GBM uh, model gave us the best accuracy. Uh, micro F1 score on the set of images that we achieved was uh, 87%. Uh, but uh, on top of that, uh, since we are working uh, with videos and we can take advantage of knowing um, what is uh, in a sequence of frame, we also use um, temporal correction algorithm that uh, I'll talk a bit more uh, later. So with that, uh, on the videos, uh, we achieve over 75% micro F1 uh, score. Uh, that is on the data that model has never seen. And um, given that we deal not with a binary problem, but with a problem of classification over 71 potential classes, many of them looking very similar to each other, it is actually quite substantial result. Next slide. So the challenges are uh, just as example uh, represented in this slide. Uh, so Sometimes AI can confuse um, orientation of poses. Like in the left bottom, you can see that uh, the woman is uh, lying and performing a twist, but uh, the AI is confused into thinking that it's a cat cow pose where she stands on uh, the uh, knees and hands. Uh, that kind of uh, issues happen during occlusion a situation or um, when the clothes may blend with uh, the background, or sometimes we have observed funny situations with shadow of the person being detected instead of the person themselves. Uh, so uh, there, there are uh, other examples of such. Um, another twist uh, on the right is detected as a tree pose. And uh, in order to mitigate the impact of such problems, uh, we use uh, some pre-processing and post-processing approach. Next slide. So pre-processing is focused on um, augmenting frames with uh, the knowledge about joints that we captured from previous frames, like you see in uh, this uh, this give uh, our instructor is leaning forward and as he leans forward uh, at uh, the extreme moment uh, the uh, model fails to see his joints uh, but we can infer where they are from uh, the knowledge that we had from previous frames so that's um, imputing of missing uh, information uh, from previous uh, frames uh, is one way to uh, improve accuracy. And the other is uh, after we already detect the pose, we can look at conditional probability of these poses being uh, a sequence. For example, if we imagine that uh, the instructor is uh, in a standing pose, 
then it is highly unlikely that at the very next frame, which is half a second after that, they will lie on uh, the yoga mat. Uh, and so if the model thinks that they transitioned in this way, we don't trust this prediction. And we assume that the instructor is still doing what they were doing in the previous um, frame. So these are uh, some simple examples of uh, how we uh, improve the accuracy of the model by temporal correction. Next slide. And uh, now I will hand it over to Linda so that you can see what's happening behind the scene and how we made it possible. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Alexandra. So I will take it over from here to deep dive into our backend um, data pipeline. So we have two separate pipeline. The one is the training pipeline that we pre-populate, train all the uh, instructor video and then populate it into index. That's how you guys can see that we can search on the website. That's the pre-populated data from our training data. Um, what if you know an instructor and or a yoga practitioner comes in, they want to upload individual uh, video. How it happened is it will upload through front end and it get dropped it into the Azure store, uh, storage account, one of the blob folder. And we set up a logic app to have the triggering that say, okay, if a file got dropped in this folder, I'm going to trigger the data pipeline we deployed um, in the Azure machine learning platform. So once this endpoint get triggered, it will receive the file name and it will go back to the storage account to pull the video down and then we'll do a serious pre-processing. So one of the major pre-processing we're going to do is segment the video into image so that we can speed up our processing later. Um, and after we segment the video into image per second, per two second, and that's configurable, we put back those image back to Azure storage account in a separate folder. And then we pass it down to our next job. And this job will take the image in and then do a human key point pose identification. We're using MM pose on that. And once it's done, it will output in a JSON file to um, save all the human key point per friend to back to our middle tier, the same storage account we used. Then the third stage is for another machine learning model we deployed to Azure Virtual Machine to um, pull the JSON down as a key point input to our yoga pose identifier model. And then it will return back uh, which friend, like each friend will have a yoga name attached to it. So with all the information we saved into our um, the storage account, there is a event notification we set up similar to a logic app. We say, okay, if I see the result.json file exist in certain bucket, I am going to let the Azure Data Explorer know that there's new data coming in and then we already set up the mapping on the Azure Data Explorer front side. They will just pull the result of JSON into that database and then using the mapping to map to the certain table. So in that case, we populate, we kind of like segment the video down into little pieces and then convert from the image to a text to a number that we can later on to run the analysis. So that being said, our one last step is the summary. We want to summarize the video and the present in the website. So what we do is after it got populated to the database, we do a lot of like, a, we call a lot of like predefined coastal function to do like mental health analyze, um, physical health analysis. And we also generate a text script for this video and then using the Azure Cognitive Speech servers to transfer this text into audio. And then we later on, we just populate all of this into Cognix Search Index. That's what's running behind the scene for our website. So we can have a smooth search experiences um, for our yoga practitioner and um, infrastructure and then the structure. 
talking too much. Let's just see how it really work in the platform. So before I um, dive deep, let me just start another pipeline. So the pipeline really will take five to ten minutes from. So it looks like this. We using code to define each stage. As we um, introduced previously, we have image segmenter stage and then post identifier, then yoga identifier, and then summary. We have four stage here. Uh, we segment into each stage. The benefit is it will allow us to easily switch from another job to a new job. So for example, for the post identifier, previously we're using alpha post to identify the human key point, but we find there is a issue with that. Um, so we changed to MM post to increase a better accuracy. Um, yeah. So, okay, you can see the image segmenter is finished. The video we're going to use is actually this one. It's a 30 minute, uh, 30 About second long video. Ranga. Breathe in, up for the Yeah, so I already pre-dropped the video into our Azure um, container here. As you can see, test five, first name, last name. And we can see that we we were creating a bucket through our job. And you can see those image are the newly created image 137. So it's just created. And then once we segment it, we were creating an mm post.json. So somewhere here um and then yeah here so and then later on we'll generate a result.json after all of this down it will get pre-populated into our um database and how it how we doing that is we're doing it through the event notification we set up which is this one you can see that there is a message coming in for the last few days that I'm doing the testing. And once the custo get it, we will we will populate those information to the custo. And this is our search index that we have been using. So let's just for example if found search coming. Yeah. We will get a lot of this result. So we'll just be populating this result into our front end. Yep. And this is what it looks like when I've finished all of it. And this is a trigger point that will trigger like, if we drop a video from the front end. This is the logic app that we set up to trigger the uh, machine learning data pipeline we just saw. So here it just say, okay, if there is a new video dropped into the yoga um, storage account, I'm going to trigger the, um, the data pipeline endpoint. So all of this I would say probably accept the data pipeline we have here. We have to kind of code it up. A lot of this can be manually config through the UI setting. And then if you're a developer, there is also um, a very rich document that people can follow and then set up a CICD pipeline to deploy all of this. So this is the essential infrastructure that we used for our um, project. Okay, next, so probably let me just restart this. Probably can just take over and yeah. start sharing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Linda. This was awesome introduction to our infrastructure backend. And I will give you a sneak peek of how we store the data. And um, this is uh, the Azure Data Explorer or Custo database. Uh, the um, result is uh, 
Linda pointed out, uh, after uh, a JSON of, of pose is being created, is ingested there. And as of now, we have um, a little over uh, a million records in this uh, database. And this um, looks like this. Um, we have uh, structured data um, representing pose name, the confidence in the model of um, detecting a particular pose in a specific frame, time when this uh, frame is appearing in the video, uh, frame number, um, image name corresponding to the uh, image in the storage account for debugging purposes, instructor's name and uh, last name, session ID uh, for which we use GUIDs, and video file name corresponding to uh, what file was uh, uploaded and triggered the pipeline. Model version we also preserve in order to be able to uh, run inferences with different models and being able to compare how they uh, perform um, versus one another. So um, how does uh, this look for a particular session, for example, one that Linda showed earlier? We uh, pick uh, some grid uh, corresponding to quiet and your mind with a twist. And this is a sequence of rows that you can see there, which makes sense. The uh, uh, session begins with sitting pose and there are many frames um, in sitting pose. In total, we have 5,000 records. This is already better than raw video stream, but we definitely want to do something uh, meaningful and compress it into insights. Uh, what are examples of such processing? So one of such examples is a function that compresses uh, insights into time-based transcript. It uses uh, scan operators designated for um, implementing finite automata uh, on the data based on certain conditions. And you can see it's pretty small function. And what it allows us to do is when we submit um, grid, we get back um, a small text of uh, the time when a pose starts. Uh, and the pose name in both English and Sanskrit for the whole session. Uh, so then other ways is uh, to use it is to get a session complexity where what we do is uh, we map um, each detected pose to its complexity and um, do an average complexity uh, of it as uh, an aggregator. Uh, behind, behind the uh, scene, we are um, joining the poses with um, encoded domain knowledge uh, in this simple tabular form uh, where we have name of the pose uh, mapped to its complexity, one being the beginner, two being intermediate and three being advanced pose. In a similar way, we have health impacts. Uh, the way it was collected was essentially a CSV file that uh, we put together based on the analysis of various sources. Then we shared it with yoga instructors. They made some corrections and then we uploaded it into the database uh, in order to leverage it for producing insights. You get the idea. Uh, in a similar way, we can get um, tabular, uh, not only tabular information, but nearly text, uh, nearly natural text information by putting the insights into a template of uh, text for the summary. So uh, now what we can do with this text to uh, enable uh, it in audio modality, I'm using a demo of Azure Cognitive Services text to speech. We just copy paste it into that page and let's try what happens. Please join this beginner level 75 minute yoga session with instructor Pavel Dmitriev. 
So for example, you don't like the voice very much. It maybe doesn't sound sufficiently tranquil for a yoga. Uh, what, what can we try else? Let's do Sara. Let's do cheerful voice. Uh, previously, we had a little too fast speech. Maybe we can do uh, a little slower. And let's increase the pitch. Let's see how it works. Please join this beginner level 75 minute yoga session with Okay, so for real, we did a multiple iterations till our yoga instructors were happy. At which point you can um, look at the configuration pre-generated for your uh, choices in XML form. And this can be used as part of your pipeline. The only thing you will need to uh, replace at runtime will be the text which you send and all the uh, choices of uh, voice configuration are already pre-encoded for you. Super convenient. Uh, what else is possible is uh, to prototype uh, dashboards uh, for different uh, sessions. Like here I have dashboard running on top of the database. Uh, we can pick different sessions, we can change confidence level. Uh, confidence level means that um, when we trust the model in detecting this or that pose and all the uh, functions that I demonstrated to you earlier are what is behind um, those dashboards. So this is at the, the core of our um, data machine that uh, enables us to uh, navigate and uh, uh, be uh, like basically translate from uh, the language of yoga in the video to a language uh, that a yoga, yoga practitioner will understand being that English, uh, Sanskrit, or maybe a numeric uh, language of seeing which muscles are exercised in which pose. Uh, okay, Linda, back to you. Okay, you want me to reshare the screen? Oh, oh yeah, I, I actually, uh, let, me, let me share it. Yeah, so just a summary of our presentation. So with the Azure machine learning platform and then some other infrastructure we use from Azure, we will be able to build a novel practical and a scalable framework that will enable the yoga instructor and then the yoga practitioner a better uh, virtual yoga practice experiences, just like you're in the, um, in the class with everyone else, you will know um, what the video is about and when to scroll back to a certain key poses to practice again. Yep, next slide. Yeah, and then here let's, uh, let's see what our stakeholder have to say from their perspective. Hi, I'm Lynn Jensen. I've been a yoga teacher and yoga therapist for over 20 years. Like most yoga teachers, I had to move my classes online due to the pandemic. As a result, I could no longer interact with my students as much as I would in a live class. So when Alexandra told me her idea of the Stay Fit, Stay Safe program, I could immediately see its benefits. Stay Fit, Stay Safe uses AI to help students safely practice yoga when they don't have the benefit of an in-person teacher. And for yoga teachers, it, it offers reassurance that their students are on the right track. Okay, yeah. So um, we also received a letter um, of endorsement from the Art of Living Foundation. Um, their organization that drive yoga awareness worldwide and works in special uh, consultative st status with the United Nations um, various uh, humiliation in initiative. So they were pretty impressed uh, with our work and say that it is closely aligned with their goal and the core value, including program on learning and development, disaster recovery, conflict resolution, and rehabilitation. 
Thank you, Linda. And uh, we were very excited with the progress that we have achieved so far. Um, at this point, we are looking at uh, productionizing the uh, um, work that we have done and uh, making it uh, available for our people to help them practice the safety of their homes. We also see very high potential at infusing um, sensor data from wearables to get even deeper insights about impacts on the health from, uh, from uh, doing different yoga poses. And we also want to eventually create a space, an online space for yoga instructors and uh, practitioners to get together in privacy preserving fashion and get real time accurate feedback on their um, poses and their progress uh, without having to share the uh, feed of their uh, cameras from home. Uh, and last but not least, we are very excited to be able to share um, the results of our work uh, with the community, including conferences, uh, research journal publications, and of course, this cloud meetup. Uh, We're very thankful to people who supported um, our project, specifically to Ken Foster for um, Azure credits uh, that helped us take full advantage of Azure offerings in implementing this project. Domain experts, uh, certified yoga instructors, uh, Pavel and Lin, and our capstone instructors, Alberto and Puya. With that, our team thanks you for the attention to our work and we open it up for questions. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Alexandra and Linda. And look at, so we'll open it back up to people for questions. I think it takes people a minute to think after a presentation like that. So let me ask you a really just a basic question about, did you, in, uh, as you were in the process of developing this and training it, what unexpected things happened? Because um, you always hear about, you know, unexpected things happening with machine learning and things like bias and things like that. So I'm interested in what your experiences were. So one early thing that was uh, an unpleasant surprise for us was, uh, when we were hoping to use um, audio signals for um, partial labeling of the data for videos. And we discovered that without fine tuning, um, audio like uh, speech to text uh, performs very poorly, which if you come to think about it, it does make sense because uh, Sanskrit is not something you would commonly encounter in the speech. And uh, also many uh, yoga uh, teachers are non-native speakers. In fact, it also is true for uh, many domains uh, with instructional videos uh, on YouTube. So uh, that, that was something that um, was uh, an, a surprise for us uh, that, um, that slightly uh, Im influenced the rest of the project, but we were still able to work around it. And anything from your end? I, I think one thing we kind of find out in the research uh, stages we find out the order of the video like the yoga flow actually doesn't matter that much so that actually help us to train our model and help us to design our data pipeline because we can just segment the video into image and then we don't have to care so much about the ordering that being said we can scale up really easily great thank you we have some questions coming in in the chat so from uh, we have, how did you find and connect with the teachers who volunteered to participate in your project? Well, this, this was uh, fortunate. We didn't really have to find teachers. We already had very uh, good working connections. So um, Pavel uh, 
Dimitriev, whose uh, video you saw in the demo, he used to work in Microsoft uh, before as a data scientist, and um, currently he's uh, vice president of data science at Outreach, but his other side of personality is a yoga instructor, so he was absolutely uh, keen to help, and he was a great expert from both yoga side and um, also presented some insights um, from business side, like he, his idea was that summarization is uh, going to be very valuable and the market is open for this. And then Lynn Jensen teaches, uh, for, for a few years she has been teaching uh, yoga uh, in um, Microsoft Azure. Um, and uh, there was also earlier a question in the chat about which, uh, which schools of yoga we are teaching. So um, the videos on which we um, trained and tested are uh, from Pavel and Lin. Pavel represents Sri Sri School of Yoga and Lin is uh, doing yoga for fertility, but uh, it doesn't really go with much loss of gener generalizability because we focused on core poses, which for all schools of yoga are pretty much the same. Great, thank you. Uh, Chris asks, how much expertise in Azure ML and programming did you have when you started the project? So uh, we, I th um, for myself, I, um, I'm a data scientist, so uh, the specific computer vision is uh, not part of my job. That's what I learned in, um, in MITS, a program and specifically the course that I'm going to teach now is uh, one of the key pillars uh, that introduced me to that and uh, that course was not in uh, Azure technologies but I would say that knowledge is very transferable as long as you kind of get the uh, idea um, and well Azure Data Explorer is one of the favorite things that I do use at work so yeah yeah, to add on that, I think our team like is we have people from different perspectives. Like myself, I'm specializing in programming, and Alexandra is specializing say Azure and machine learning. And then uh, we have another person, Karthik. Um, he's from Amazon, so he's also applied scientist. He's specializing in uh, machine learning model as well. And then we have Duncan and Simra. Um, they're good at data analysis and then some web front end. So we kind of like, we learn from each other throughout the journey and each of us contribute a little bit to build up this project. Well, thank you so much. Do we have any last questions before we close out? Okay, well, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Linda. This is really great. And um, thank you for coming. Thank you everybody to coming. And uh, so next month we will actually be having the Google vendor showcase and we'll be having um, a speaker from Computing Data Science and Society, which is our new uh, college in design here at Berkeley. And we will be having Anthony Suen, who's one of our co-founders of the meetup uh, as our host, as he's in that division. So hope you can join us then. And then a last uh, thank you to Berkeley IT, the Division of Computing, Citrus and the Banatow Institute and the Data Science and Society program and LBNL and Research IT. Thanks so much everybody for coming and we will see you next month.